Hi everyone, I'm Parth Merotra. I'm an editor at Juggernaut Books and I'm here with Tony Joseph. Tony is going to be writing a book for us on the early Indians, who we are and where we came from. Um, and there's been a new study that was released on Sunday, uh, which has led to a lot of questions. And so Tony is going to be explaining some of what the findings of this study have been. Uh, we're going to ask him a couple of questions. Uh, so Tony, tell us one thing. Who were the original Indians? Who were the original Homo sapiens that walked this land? Um, the commonly accepted theory is that everyone today that is outside of Africa came from one single line of emigration out of Africa. It's called out of Africa. That's what it's called. And uh, genetically, that uh, because you know all non-Africans derived from that lineage. Uh, genetically, the the maximum the the age the time of that uh, that emigration or the splitting of the genetic of the of the lineage that spread out throughout the world uh, has been generally estimated around seventy thousand years ago. Now, if you then the question is, what time did they arrive in India, hmm. and then went on to populate? The rest of uh, East Asia and all the way up to Australia. Hmm. Um, we do not have an uh, entirely accurate estimate of that, but it would be safe to say that the uh, first uh, out of Africa migrants to reach in this region would be around 60,000 years ago. The earliest modern human fossils we have is actually from uh, Sri Lanka. Hmm. From the Sri Lankan caves in Fahian, and that is about thirty-five thousand to thirty-eight thousand years ago. So, yeah. So the rough answer is about uh, around sixty thousand years ago. So is when the general consensus, when the out of Africa Homo sapiens arrive in what we know as India today, yeah, was it a barren land? There were no humans there at that time. Uh, they would have no modern humans or homo sapiens but it would be incorrect to say no humans because we do include other uh, homo species as part of uh, humans it's possible that it's it's uh, certain that there were other hominins in india before the modern humans arrived because we have extensive uh, evidence of tools that were made by them the earliest one is dated to about 1.2 million years ago in a place called Athirampakam in Tamil Nadu. So not just in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, Shivali, Central India, there have been enough evidence of other hominins who were very much present in India. Now the question is, when the mod so did they when the modern humans, Homo sapiens arrived in the South Asia, did they get uh, did they, you know did they meet face to face with their mm. uh, cousins, we do not know mm. the answer to that. Um, there is a, a place called Jwalapuram that I visited a couple of months ago in, the, in Andhra Pradesh, where there is a very interesting situation, you know, the, where you have the ash from the uh, Toba volcanic eruption in the Sumatran island that happened uh, 74,000 years ago. That is a very big volcanic eruption that affected almost the whole world and the ash from that uh, from that eruption covered an area from east asia to east africa so we were in the middle of it so in this place you have a very well defined ash layer mm. and the important part of this is that that ash layer is a very good mark uh, it, it it says what's behind below that mm. is is before 74000 years ago and what is about that is mm. so it, had a, it, it it functions as a very nice marker. It helps us date everything. Date everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and we have tools, uh, probably made by hominins, not Homo sapiens, which are under the layer, and we do have uh, tools made by modern humans above the above layer. There's a big time gap between them. Sure. But the the the, the interesting thing is this area was a favorite habitat favorite area for both you know both uh, our cousins and ourselves and did they meet there or were they already empty of hominins when our ancestors arrived in Dwalavaram we do not know so you are saying that this ash layer at 74,000 years ago underneath that layer so yes. predating 74,000 years 
you have tools that were made by our cousins. Yes. And above that layer, so after seventy four thousand years, you have tools that were made by yeah, Homo sapiens. There is a significant time gap between sure. them. Sure. Sure. I'm not saying immediately. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still an interesting question. Yeah. Whether they go to meet the hominins. So the Homo sapiens arrived from Africa into India around Correct. sixty thousand years ago. Correct. Okay. So. who exactly set up the indus valley civilization who were they and when was it set up very interesting question now you, you you know a civilization as we know it arises when there is when people have already moved on to uh, graduated to farming and agriculture okay so the the, the corollary to that question is when did agriculture begin and farming begin in that mm. area Uh, what we can say for sure is by about the eighth, seventh millennium, you can be sure that farming in some way had begun. Okay. In uh, in 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 that region. And what is that region that we are talking about? We can. It's uh, let's say uh, it's uh, the northwest India. Okay. The Indus Valley uh, broad uh, area, for example, Mahar Kak is a is a specific place in Pakistan where the earliest evidence of Uh, of 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 agriculture has been found where domestication etc now two things are interesting that uh, the crops that we began to cultivate in that region wheat and barley they are west asian crops so it came from west asia whether it came with people from west asia or it these were uh, crops adopted by the people Uh, you know, existing people, hunter gatherer people who were moving into or beginning to experiment with agriculture, we do not yet know. We also know that they did domesticate uh, the cattle, the hump mm. cattle, mm. Uh, which was the zebu cattle, which was a, which was which we know for sure is a domesticated here. It's not an import. So there was experimentation and things going on there. The question is whether it's done by people already. you know the hunt the, the descendants of the hunter gatherers who were experimenting with the original Afric, out of africa migrants who were experimenting with agriculture or did was their migration from the west bringing the crops as well as new agricultural practices this is not a question that has been answered yet but what we do know for sure is that at some point we do know for sure there was significant uh, migration of what this study calls uh, iranian agriculturists mm. uh, into the indus periphery mm. and we also know that they uh, that they mixed with the lo- with with the hunter gatherers mm. now what the genetics can tell us is the period when the mixing happened and that the study says is around uh, between 4700 bce and if i am not mistaken about 3000 BCE. Okay. Now we know that the mixing happened then, but could the Iranian agricultures have arrived earlier? They could have. Right. For that, we need actual more evidence from the Indus Valley. Right. So maybe that would happen sometime. So that question is that remaining question is yet to be answered. Okay. When did they arrive? So we what we know is that in a certain time band, yeah, that there was a mixing of the original hunter gatherers. Correct. who were in india yes and iranian agriculturists who yeah. must have migrated to the northwestern indian region correct okay and we also now know through this new study yeah that there was an outward migration from the indus valley civilization areas or yeah. at least the peripheral areas yeah to iran and central asia yeah there has been uh, this has been known for long that there were contacts between indus valley and places like uh, bmac which is the bactria margiana archaeology com- complex where um, is that this would be uh, uh, northern afghanistan today it would be a large area for okay. that region if i am not mistaken you know tajikistan it, it, okay. it includes a very large area the and it's not just there we have had contacts in oman for example for trading purposes so this is a this is this is the largest civilization of its time and it had contacts very large contacts with other areas of civilization so it's not surprising that we had outward migration uh, we had presence of uh, uh, of indus valley civilization people in the bmac or in uh, or in other places 
Now, when you say that there was the mingling of hunter gatherers with uh, yeah. Iranian agriculturalists, yeah. are these hunter gatherers of the same DNA from the out of Africa migration? Yes. Yes, they are the same people. They are the same people. Okay. Now, what is the Aryan migration theory? Uh, the Aryan migration theory uh, began uh, when it was discovered that there are significant uh, similarities between languages spread across such a vast region. The languages spoken in India, Sanskrit, uh, Greek, uh, or or other European languages, and. Uh, the, so there was a suggestion that how did this language come to India? So mm -hmm. there was always a suggestion that there was it must have come with some migration at some point. When the Indus Valley civilization was discovered in the 1920s, and you also saw it declining, uh, the, archae the archaeologists then who were making these discoveries did suggest that the Indus Valley civilization declined as uh, speakers of Indo-European languages arrived. Okay. Now we do not have uh, archae uh, archaeological evidence of any invasion. But what do he? What we do have are one the the language links that links all of us, uh, uh, the, all these languages, and uh, increasingly now. Uh, first we had the early genetic evidence, now we have ancient DNA evidence that is proving that there was significant migration of people from the steppe uh, in the second millennium BCE and they are a prime candidate for a group that would have brought uh, Indo-European languages to India because you, yeah, we, we see a striking correlationship between uh, the spread of uh, of the step a, of the step pastoralists both into uh, into the in, 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 into West Asia into Asia into West Asia as well as into South Asia. So there is a significant correlation between these two, and uh, so yes, so this migration in second millennium would be a prime candidate for a group that brought Indo-European languages, including Sanskrit or an earlier version of Sanskrit, into South South Asia. Now the. Uh the uh, the opposition to this viewpoint would say yeah. that could it not have been equally possible yeah. that instead of sanskrit or the or the predecessor language to sanskrit coming from the steppe into india could yeah. it not be possible that it went from india to the steppe as long as the evidence was merely linguistic uh, there was what I would say uh, a tenuous case made that this could have happened the other way around yeah? and the argument could have gone on without, uh, uh, without end and this has actually been happening even though the vast majority of, uh, of experts in the field would uh, consider out of India an oddball theory which doesn't fit in which has no support. But I would say that as long as linguistics was the only argument on which it was based, there is still a plausible reason you could say it could have been out of here. Hmm. But now what has changed the picture entirely is ancient DNA. Because what you have now are ancient DNA, well dated ancient DNA of movement of people that shows clear movement of people from say Kazakhstan to Tajikistan to Uzbek, uh, you know, Uzbekistan to, um, to BMAC and further on towards South Asia in, in, in the Swat Valley in mm -hmm. Kashmir. So when you have ancient DNA that shows a clear movement of people, it can't be the other way around. Right. That argument no longer holds. So if, uh, one would be very interested, very curious to see so how how how, uh, how those those people who have been making the out of India argument now responds to the evidence of ancient DNA? Now the migrants who would have come from the steppe in the second millennium BCE yeah. are what are commonly known as Aryans. Am I right? Yes, it would be yeah, it would be it would be correct to say that it, that it, 
that they brought into European languages and they called themselves Aryans. Now, so who, if, if one had to simply answer, who are the ancestors of the modern day North Indians? Yeah. Who, what would you say? Who are they? Okay. Uh, until around 2000 BC, uh, what we could see in the North where would have been hunter gatherers as well as Indus Valley Civilization, which is a mixture of hunter gatherers plus the Iranian and agriculturists that came. And in the south, what you would have seen are the uh, are the descendants of the original out of Africa migrants, the hunter gatherers. Now, all that changed a big, you know, a dramatic, uh, tempestuous period of a millennium between mm. 2000 BCE mm -hmm. and 1000 BCE when, when, when is this, all of this significantly changed. You have a, you see a civilization that is declining. Mm -hmm. You see a new influx of uh, migrants who were not there earlier. And uh, you see new mixing ha happening between the new arrivals from the steppe mm. and the Indus Valley population. And we also see uh, movements of the Indus Valley uh, people uh, down south, mm. perhaps taking new agricultural practices. It's possible that agricultural practices began in the south already, but around 3000 BC you can see slow intensification of all that also. Okay. So in the south also there is, uh, there is a mixing that is happening and in the north. So at this point of time is when, according to the study, is when they say ancestral South Indian and North Indian and ancestral South Indian formed. Ancestral really? North Indian is a mix of three. Yes. And the ancestral South Indian is a mix of two. Yes. And during the uh, period that uh, followed, and there has been significant uh, mixing between ANI and ASI, of course, to varying degrees. So we are a mixture of at least three main groups. So Tony, am I right in saying that the ancestral South Indians yeah. are a mixture of the of hun of the original hunter gatherers, yes. the out of Africa migration, yeah. as well as the Persian, as well as the Iranian Correct. agriculturalists. Yes. And the ancestral North Indians yeah. are a mixture of these two groups, yes. the hunter gatherers and yes. the Iranian agriculturalists, yes. as well as the migrants from the steppe yeah. in the second millennium BCE. Yes. That forms the ANI, ancestral North Indian, and ASI, ancestral South Indian. Correct. And the modern Indians who we see today are a mixture of these two. Yes. Okay. And uh, during the period from 2000 to uh, maybe the turn of the, uh, uh, of the you know, when we move into the uh, common era, uh, is a period when mixing again happened between all of this and so ANI, ASI, all of it. Hmm. At some point, there are endogamy practices and and and, and uh, the mixing stopped. What is endogamy? Uh, marrying only within marry regulations on whom you marry. Okay, and uh, and that's when the you could theoretically argue whether this is a period when the caste system and, uh, and it fell in place, but we do see a period after which mixing reduces considerably. I see. But uh, but the whole I mean to put it, but before the gates closed, we have already been mixed up. Right. It's already a mixed population. And so you. Uh, you say that the bottom line in India is that we are all migrants. Yes, and I want to add uh, to it also. I, we said uh, at, it, it's, it's a mixture of at least three populations. Mm. But at least, so in, in actuality, it's a mixture of more number yes. of groups. These are the we dominant study, These are the dom more uh, numerous ones. But I think the study hasn't sufficiently focused on other groups. For example, the Austroasiatic speak, speaking people. Uh, all of whom, or most of them, or some of them, may have come from East Asia. Okay. Uh, and this study suggests a date of uh, around 3000 BCE for them coming in. But uh, I haven't. Uh, this could be earlier too. I think 
the study has not focused enough on them and there needs to be far more study. And I think they are a significant part of our history and uh, this, the full formation, the full understanding of the formation of Indian society won't be complete without a better understanding of the Austro-Asiatic speakers. That is people from East Asia who migrated? Yeah, they are Mundari speakers, Mundas. Uh, Got it. So uh, quite apart from that, there are also Sino-Tibetan hmm. uh, language speakers hmm. who are especially in the very northern parts who are also significant, you know, migrants to the country yeah. and uh, add to the number of language families that we have. Yes. So these two groups have not been sufficiently focused on right. in, the, in the study. So even though it keeps saying at least three groups, I think it is safe to say, you know, at least, uh, at four, least five four or five groups. And just let us end with uh, what is the political significance yeah. of what has now been of the Aryan migration theory that now has the backing of DNA evidence? What is the political significance of it? It is sad that this should be become a political issue. Uh, because what the study actually does is to understand and appreciate uh, the diversity of our population and uh, how we have all contributed. We are all, all of us are part of it. Now all of us carry those lineages to some extent or the other. It shouldn't be a political issue. I think it is a political issue because uh, when there is an effort to see Indian civilization as a unisource civilization, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. It is a multi-source civilization. It draws its impulses, its culture from multiple sources with multiple migration histories and when you accept that, uh, those uh, political issues should go away. But I think there is a difficulty in accepting that uh, we are a multi-source civilization, civilization which we have built together in common. I'm sure the trolls don't like you saying that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it has to be expected. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.